You guys, I posted these videos like weeks ago and I solved the area of this red region using geometry. A lot of people told me it would be easier with calculus. It is not easier with calculus, but I did it anyway. So if you want to see the calculus steps, here we go. I apologize, it's kind of long. You don't even want to know how much time I spent on it. First, we take our image and place it on a graph. Here it is in Desmos. And we want to find the equations of the two circles cutting into the square. So the equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where hk is the center and r is the radius. So for this first circle, the center is at 0, 5, and it has a radius of 5. So our equation will be x minus 0 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 5 squared. And we can simplify that into x squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 25. And if we plug that into Desmos, you can see that's this right here. This other circle also has a radius of 5, but its center is at 5, 10. So that equation would be x minus 5 squared plus y minus 10 squared equals 5 squared. And we can plug this into Desmos, and there it is right there. So let's do the green circle first. In order to use calculus, we need to rewrite this where we have y in terms of x. Or in other words, we want to get the y by itself. So we can subtract x squared from both sides and we get y minus 5 squared equals 25 minus x squared. And then we can square root both sides. On the left hand side, the square root and the square go away, so we have y minus 5. And on the right hand side, we have plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared. Well, the reason there's a plus or minus is we have two functions. We have one on the top of the circle and one on the bottom of the circle. We're not interested in the one on the top because it doesn't touch our red region. We're only interested in the bottom part. So that's why we're going to change this into minus square root of 25 minus x squared. That is the lower portion of the circle. And then we can add 5 to both sides and we get y on the left hand side. And on the right hand side we have negative root 25 minus x squared plus 5. And now we've expressed the lower part of that circle. Now that only touches the red part of our circle from x equals 0 to x equals 5. So when we do our integral we're going to put 0 here and 5 here. And when we're done with all this that will give us the area under that curve. One of the properties of integrals tells us we can split this up into two separate integrals. We'll leave this left-hand side one alone, but the one on the right is going to take a little bit more work. We're going to use some u substitution. We'll say x is equal to 5 sine u. And then to take the derivative of this, we'll use the fact that the derivative of sine is cosine, so that means dx is equal to 5 cosine u du. And now we have a replacement for this dx portion. Next, let's find a replacement for this x squared. So let's write down x squared here, and x squared is literally going to be this 5 sine u squared. And this square goes to both the 5 and the sine, so it'll be 5 squared sine squared, and 5 squared is 25. And now we have a replacement for x squared in terms of u. Now the last two things we've got to replace are these limits of integration, because they were from x equals 0 to x equals 5. We have to figure out what are they in terms of u. So let's take our x equals 5 sine u, and we want to get u alone in this. So we'll divide both sides by 5, so we have x over 5 equals sine u, and then next we're going to arc sine both sides. On the right hand side we'll just have u and then we can shift these around so we have u is equal to arc sine x over 5. And let's put that up here with our other u sub documentation. So now in the place of these question marks we can substitute arc sine of 1 fifth x and for this top one we want to plug in 5 for x and for the bottom one we plug in 0 for x. 1 fifth of 5 is just 1 and 1 fifth of 0 is 0. And then we can look at the unit circle or the graph of sine or the graph of arc sine and see that the arc sine of 1 is pi over 2. And same thing, we can see that arc sine of 0 is 0. So these will be our new limits of integration. So let's copy all of this down and let's give ourselves some space. In the place of this x squared, we're going to plug in 25 sine squared u. In the place of this dx right here, we're going to plug in 5 cosine u du. And for this 5, we're going to plug in pi over 2. And for the 0, we will leave it as 0. Under this square root, both terms have a 25, so let's factor out that 25. And then after we factor that out, inside the parentheses here, we have 1 minus sine squared u. If you take the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, and then subtract sine squared from both sides, we can see that cosine squared u is equal to 1 minus sine squared u. So in the place of this 1 minus sine squared u, we can plug in cosine squared u. Let's smush everything together. So this square root of 25 cosine squared u, we can split this into two separate square roots. And then square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of cosine squared is just cosine. And then we can take this 5 times 5 to give us 25, and cosine u times cosine u is cosine squared u. This 25 is a multiplicative constant, so we can pull it out. And now we've cleaned up this integral quite a bit. So if we look at this double angle formula, we can rearrange some things, and that enables us to rewrite this cosine squared u as 1 plus cosine 2u over 2. Well, this over 2 is a multiplicative constant, so we can pull it out. And then this 1 plus is an additive constant, so we can make a separate integral. And that's using these properties of integrals. 
Now to solve this cosine 2u, we're going to use some v substitution, where v is equal to 2u and dv would be equal to 2 du. After we divide both sides by 2, we get dv over 2 equals du. So now we have a match for this 2u, and we have a match for this du. But we still got to find matches for these. So if u is equal to pi over 2 or 0, we want to know what is the corresponding v for those limits of integration. So v is equal to 2u. So we just need to do 2 times each of these u's. 2 times pi over 2, and we can do 2 times 0. And 2 times pi over 2 is pi, and 2 times 0 is 0. And now we have our new limits of integration. Let's call Copy this stuff down. In the place of the 2u, we're going to put in v. In the place of du, we're going to put in 1 half dv. So I'll change this du into a dv, and this 2 in the denominator is going to change into a 4. That's because we're multiplying it by a half. And then we got to change the limits of integration. This pi over 2 will change into pi, and the 0 stays as 0. Now we've seriously cleaned up this integral. So for this first integral, the antiderivative of 5 is 5x. And we're going to evaluate that from 5 to 0. And then for the second integral, the antiderivative of 1 is u. So we're going to do negative 25 over 2 times u evaluated from pi over 2 to 0. And then for this third integral, the antiderivative of cosine v is sine v. And we're going to evaluate that from pi to 0 and multiply it by negative 25 over 4. So for the first one, we're going to do 5x minus 5x, where we plug in 5 for the first x and 0 for the second x. And then for the second one, we're going to do u minus u, where we plug in pi over 2 for the first one and 0 for the second. And then for the third one, we're going to do sine minus sine, where we plug in pi for the first and 0 for the second. Well, 5 times 5 minus 5 times 0 is 25. And then for this one, we're going to multiply negative 25 over 2 times pi over over 2, which gives us negative 25 pi over 4. And for this last one, sine of pi and sine of 0 are both 0. So all of this is just going to be 0. So our final answer for the first red region is 25 minus 25 pi over 4. And we can update that up here. For this region right here, the answer is 25 minus 25 pi over 4. Let's also note that this entire integral simplified to 25 pi over 4. And this will always be true even if we change our variable to something like u. This looks important. Let's put a box around it. Now we got to work on this second equation. We'll subtract x minus 5 squared from both sides, and then we're going to square root both sides. So we end up with y minus 10 equals plus or minus that. Now, once again, we're only interested in the bottom half of the circle. So out of this plus or minus, we're only interested in the minus. And we still want to get y by itself. So we'll add 10 to both sides and we get y equals 10 minus all of that. This is our equation. So we're going to take the integral of that. And the reason this is from 5 to 10 is because now we're looking at the region where x equals 5 up to x equals 10. So we're taking this integral. Next, we can take this 10 and split this up into two separate integrals. And for the second integral, let's do some u substitution where u is equal to x minus 5. And then when we take the derivative, du is equal to dx. And next, we've got to change these limits of integration. We want to know what is u equal when x is 10 or x is 5. So u is equal to x minus 5, but we'll plug in 10 for the x. And 10 minus 5 is equal to 5. And we'll do the same thing down here. u is equal to x minus 5, but we'll plug in 5 for the x. And 5 minus 5 is equal to 0. So now we're ready to apply our u substitutions. This x minus 5 inside here can be changed into u. This dx can be changed into du. This 10 up here can be changed into 5. And this 5 down here can be changed into 0. And now we have two very nice looking integrals. Using our notes from before that we put in a nice box, we know that this integral is going to be equal to 25 pi over 4. And that's going to be subtracted from this integral. And then to do this integral, the antiderivative of 10 is 10x. So we're going to do 10x evaluated from 10 to 5. Well, that'll be 10x minus 10x, where we plug in 10 or 5. And 10 times 10 is 100, and 10 times 5 is 50. And 100 minus 50 is 50. And then we can bring this down. So now we have the rest of our area. So let's update this up here. This region right here is going to be 50 minus 25 pi over 4. And now we just need to combine like terms. 25 plus 50 is equal to 75. And negative 25 pi over 4 minus 25 pi over 4 is negative 50 pi over 4. This 50 pi over 4 can be simplified into 25 pi over 2. And let's give it a label of units squared and put a box around it. This is the answer to our question. This red region has an area of 75 minus 25 pi over 2 units squared. And this answer matches the end of the other two videos. So we probably got it right. This was a long one. My voice might be really harsh right now. If you actually made it to the end of this video, comment where you're from. I'm curious who finished the video, and I'm also curious where you guys are from. How exciting.